right, all right, all right, all right, all right, everybody, everybody, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Brothers and sisters all over the world, kakas and dadas, dadas and kakas. Our is our Asabu, our bodies are new. Our is I'm China. You order, you order, put it, brothers and sisters. Welcome back. Okay, listen, uh, just popping in just for a second. You guys might hear a little bit, got a little, a little congestion, got to get rid of on my way to Duke of Ladawa. Duke of Ladawa, that means pharmacy. But again, here in Mbeya, this little town I've been telling you about. So listen, I'm going to show you something here. I'm going to turn the camera around and let you see such a beautiful scene in the daytime. You can, you can, this is one of the main roads here. Uh, and, uh, this is a picturesque <clears throat> scene with the landscape. You can see mountains, a layer of mountains. A mountain in the foreground, a mountain in the background. And the mountain in the foreground has houses in the hills. Reminds me of many parts of uh, California when I was there living in, 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 in um, California. Got a chance to see beautiful houses in the hills. And it's something that for me is very attractive. Uh, the area that I was born in is flatland, flatland. And so you don't get a chance to see it. So I just wanted to show you so you can see just how beautiful the area is. And I'm going to tell you. Certain that in every part of the world you're going to have areas that are just beautiful. But 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 the reason why I spent some time showing you is because as I've talked to you before, economics. There is an economic component <clears throat> to tourism. Tourism is a very large part of many countries' economic uh, input. For example, if, if, if everyone in the world thinks that a place is beautiful and they want to come there, for example, France promotes itself as the, you know, Paris is the place of love and romance, you know. So people from all over the world, they're going to want to come to France. They're going to bring their money there. They're going to stay in the hotels. That means they eat at the restaurants. The taxi drivers are making money. Cabbies. Uh, food producers, people growing food, have to sell it to the hotel. Uh, then you got the marketers, you got the advertisers. Everybody's making money because you have people traveling in from all around the world. Well, why is this important to us as, as African people, as black people? It's important to us because if you put <coughs> out information that a particular place is beautiful, like France and Paris and it's love and romance, you put that information out, propaganda. You put out propaganda about Africa. Oh, it's a third world country. It's undeveloped. It's monkeys, jungles, and all. You see? Then people, they're not going to want to come. Because they're going to think, oh, don't go there because it's this way. Oh, I thought these people were this way. But those W's are not going to put out the positive information about us. Our land, our beautiful <clears throat> living places, our beautiful tourist attractions, they're not going to put that out. And quite frankly, I, I don't expect them to do that. I expect us to do it. Because we're supposed to be about the business of doing it for us. But because of the economic oppression, the, the, the pursuit of empire and domination, they educated us in such a way to think that their people are the only ones capable of doing that <clears throat> and to redirect our focus away from doing that and when I say doing that I'm talking about the promotion of our own business opportunities in this case tourism economic <clears throat> economic benefit from tourism so me as an individual I'm a part of a collective in black African people all over the world. I'm just one, but I have a responsibility to my people to do all that I can to bring in 
uh, as much positive information as I can about the good motherland so that people can see. Oh, by the way, I should, I should really be turning the camera around. But so that people can see <coughs> the beauty, and then they'll have a, a desire to, to want to come. You create that, that desire by what you show them, the stimulus. You create that. They created that with London and, and <coughs> Paris and Rome. Oh, you think these are the places that are so beautiful. Oh, and so people want to go there. Because that's centuries and centuries and centuries of talking about those places as being the centers of the world. New York. And, and anybody who's been to New York, you know, New York is a lot of people. It's not beautiful. It's got a lot of high-tech billboards. Not really a beautiful place. It's not beautiful like that. Not just crowded. So what I'm saying to you is we take the time. You need all the rest of us work together to put out the kind of propaganda necessary to encourage people to want to come to our motherland, bring their money and their dollars to our motherland. And there are places, it's not to say every place is beautiful, but you have, just like in every community, you have places where uh, there are some that are nicer than others. And those are the areas you promote, and you promote the other areas too. And then things like here, we have the safari, the king, wild kingdoms where the animals are. People know about that all over the world. Many of them come. But I can tell you, <clears throat> for me, <clears throat> just as an average person, before I begin to research and learn on my own, that wasn't something that I, I knew just as common information every day about the safari and the Serengeti and the kingdom and you come and ask me. It wasn't something that was pushed. The only thing that gets pushed when you're a child is, in America anyway, is it the big three. London, Rome, Paris, those are basically the big three. And you, you, you may hear about Athens and Greece and the historical. This is all they talk about, which makes sense because this is their history. It's their responsibility to promote their history, their culture their ideas. It's our responsibility to promote our own. We just have some, some people, groups, them basically, who have educated us in such a way that we are divided. We just, oh, I'm this and I'm that, and we don't have any collective agenda. That's changing now. It's, it's slowly changing, but once you separate the people, then the people can't use the collective power of their economics to develop a system of promotion that ensures people know about the beauty of their homeland. We don't even think it's our homeland, many of us. Well, I'm not an African, I'm not a, all that, all that nonsense. Listen, I tell you guys again, shake hands with you, I, I, I gotta tell you, it's just, it's just one of the best that's an in, in, informative uh, videos that I could have seen. He goes into detail about the origin of man. And it's, it's generally the scientific community, they all agree, they all know. <clears throat> they all know where the people come from. They all know. The information is there, this is hard factual information. They all know, but they just don't promote that information. So anyway, I'm going to turn the camera around, everybody. Remember, check out that. I, I, I'm, going to try to, I'm going to try to get a copy of it and show you, play it. I just don't really know and understand fully yet how certain videos can be used without people causing you some kind of problems and, you know, copyright. Education should be universal. It should be free. It shouldn't be, you know, oh, you know, you know, I'm trying to make money. But that's the capitalist system. Capitalist system creates these, these barriers, these artificial barriers that are harmful in terms of spreading information and technology and education. In actuality, capitalism, one of its dominant components is to keep you uneducated. So is democracy. And I'm talking about the Western form of democracy, the W's. They understand their capitalist system along with their 
in a democratic uh, system that values their principles, the goal is to keep you uneducated. Because if you become an educated society, you recognize that what they're telling you is that the majority of the people make the decisions. But they're telling you that while at the same time not allowing the majority of the people to make the decisions. And if you become an educated society and you recognize that, oh, wait a minute, they're saying one thing and doing another, then you reunite, you unify. And that's something they can't have. That's why they do that thing. So listen, I'm going to turn the camera around, y'all. This is Isaiah. And uh, we're going to get a chance to see a little bit of the, see a little bit of the, the beauty. I'm just walking to the Duke of Ladawa Pharmacy. And then I'm going to show you where I'm walking, and I'll show you a little bit of that. It's good talking to you guys again. I, I miss you so much. It's good to be to talk to you again. Love you guys. Share it. Subscribe to the video. Please do that. I need you to do that. I need subscriptions, okay? Uh, appreciate you so much. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <clears throat> Everybody, I turned the camera around. I'm just walking to the, uh, to the pharmacy, or Duke Ladawa in Swahili. And, uh, you can see in the background, this is a main road, Tarmac Road, but the beauty of the mountains, you can see even here above the trees, there's a mountain in the background there above those trees there. And for me, I just love it. I just, I just love it. Um, it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful scenery, and it's even more beautiful at night because at night you can see the the lights of the city or the lights of the houses in the city in the hills extremely beautiful it makes a walk down the street so so enjoyable um, now this is a very <clears throat> I think busy and bustling part like of the town uh, where there's a lot of economic activity uh, you know businesses markets and these were I was here last night getting something and uh, people were up kind of out doing their thing throughout the whole night roughly uh, I think I was out it's probably like 11 o'clock when I was on my way home but it's very nice but wow look at that Ooh, I wish you could see way in the back. Remember I was telling you, there, that's the foreground. Those are the houses in the hills there. Now, way in the back, back there, way in the back, back there, there are houses in the hills in the background of the mountains. But you can see from here, it is just extremely beautiful. And why? Why? Now, here's a little road going down there. You know, you can go down there. It's got some shops. A lot of individual shops. Now, I'm going to mention this to you because we're talking about economics. Here, unlike in America, where America talks a great deal about, uh, they talk a great deal about small businesses to... <clears throat> Is the driver of America a small business? The small business—they're they're lying to you. Small business, yes, it's somewhat the driver in, in the sense that, yeah, you got small businesses. But remember, capitalism—the goal is to get rid of the small businesses. All of you people talking about capitalism and believing the nonsense. No, capitalism—the goal of capitalism is to create large-scale businesses that swallow up all the small businesses so that they eliminate competition. They tell you competition is good. No, they're telling you that while all at the same time, they are trying to destroy competition. Because when they get rid of competition, in other words, if you got one dominant grocery store, say for example, Walmart, all of the small stores in the neighborhood where Walmart is. Walmart lowers the prices. The small store can't compete with them because Walmart is buying in such high volume that they get a bulk rate that the small stores can't get. 
they lower the price. The people don't have any money. People are struggling, so they want to go to the place that's going to give them the best value for their money. So where do they go? They go to Walmart. And then what? Walmart crushes the competition. So that now all those small businesses, remember, the, it's the hub of, 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 uh, it's the hub of American, you know, economy, the small businessman. Now they get crushed. Then they go out of business. And then what happens? The large company, in this example, Walmart, buys up all of their supplies, gets rid of them, and then opens another store where they used to be. This is, this is what capitalism does, and this is the benefit. Remember, capitalism is profit. Profit is the number one goal, you know? You see? But they lie to you and tell you they want to encourage competition. They're lying. I'm bringing this up to you to show you a point here. That as I'm walking down this road, I'm showing you here that capitalistic, that capitalistic idea has not taken full root here yet. Because here, all along this road here that I'm showing you right now, all along this road here, all of these businesses, I just walked down the road, all of these businesses to the right of me, to the left of me, on each side of the road, you have two or three little stores, the exact same store selling the exact same product right next to each other because they're individual small business owners and they have their own little group of customers who come to them and the one next door to them got their own little group of customers who come to them. And why is that important? What that does, that allows each one of these little businesses to survive, that family. They can sell their products to their customers and no one's no one's upset because hey the customer came to you today but he didn't come to me. They don't care about that. But they're not they're not gaining tremendous wealth for one individual and everybody's put now oh, everybody's making a little money enough to take care of themselves and to provide for their needs. Now, this is an important part to understand. Yes, that is a very good thing. Small businesses, this is actually where it is in complete and absolute, complete and absolute practice. Small business being the hub of the, 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 the economic life of the people. Look here, if you look over there, if you look in the distance, you see some people when this truck goes by, you see some people working with wood. They're working with wood. And here's another one right here. They're working with wood. So you got one, you got one like there, and you got one over there. Two wood places. Working with wood. They're right next to each other. America frowns on that. They, they really frown on that. So it, it, what you'll notice is that as things continue to go along, as things continue to go along, um, even here you got two hardware stores right next to each other. It's just, it's just an amazing, an amazing, um, an amazing situation where the very thing America talks about is taking place here, taking place here in Africa. It's just, it's just an incredible situation. So, economically, economically, this is, this is where it's happening. Now you have to have a mix though. What I mean by mix is you still need large-scale businesses of large-scale economy. You need that businesses that will employ 10,000 people, 15,000 people, 20,000 people, 100,000 people. You still need that to be a part of your economy. It cannot be limited only to the small business. There has to be a mix. And this is where the oppression domination by the W's takes place because they want to limit that aspect of, of African development. They don't want large-scale large manufacturing here. They don't want large-scale production here. They don't want that here. Why? If you have large-scale manufacturing and production, now you create many, many jobs and you create a strong middle class and an upper class. Those people become stable. 
That means what? Now they can start to invest in what? An education system. They invest in their own scientific development, their own technological development. Then they become a competitor to Europeans and the W's. This is the problem that they're having, and this is the problem why they keep what they call third world countries, third world nations. They suppress the development. They suppress it. And when they suppress it, they prevent those people from generational wealth development because they keep them dependent upon the manufacturing capabilities of the W. That's why they only want your raw materials in the raw stage. You can produce that. You can dig it up out of the ground and give it to them. Then they call it value added addition, meaning the value chain. You take it from the ground. It's, it's a raw thing. Let's, I'm just giving a crude example. If dirt, just, I'm making this up so that you understand. It's a simple example. If you take dirt, but you can make mud pies, right? And you got the mud pies, and you can put some peanuts in the mud pies, and you can put, you can make mud pie bars, and you can make mud pie cookies. You can make all this just from dirt. So the only thing they're gonna let them, the, the African people do, is give them the dirt, because the dirt by itself has minimum value, because it hasn't been turned into the product of a mud pie, a mud bar, a mud cookie. Which also means what? If you're gonna sell that, you gotta have the packaging, right? You gotta have the plastic to wrap it in. Then you have to have what? The trucks and the transport to move it. Then you have to have what? Also a store that's built to house it so the consumer can come and buy it. And then you gotta have what? Lights and electricity. Then you have to have good roads. Do you understand? All of these elements are part of your economic development. And each one of those little areas that I mentioned to you are thousands of jobs. And again, once you get to jobs, now the government has a tax base because all that is is you're just rotating the money, circulating the money in such a way that people can use the money to develop their econ economies and societies. It's a very, very simple process with a lot of complexity within it. And they manipulate the complexity. So they tell you that you're poor because the only thing you're giving them, which is the, remember, it's the essence of the foundation of the economy. If you were making dirt as your main, main uh, e economic activity, well, dirt is simple because you could just dig it up. But remember, now it becomes more complex because you're making dirt cookies, dirt pies, dirt candy bars. Then you add the other things that I just mentioned. That is what they are suppressing in, for us as African people. And this is why we have to never give that up. We must fight with everything in our body to change that so that our society can grow and evolve technologically, educationally, politically, socially, and economically. Okay, so listen, I, I just had to explain that to you. The walk down the street when I do these things and I show you, it's not simply just to show you where it is and its, it's current condition. Its current condition, when you, if, if many of you come from America or Europe or Britain or Spain or in these more developed societies, in Japan or wherever you've been, China, wherever you've been, and you're comparing how it looks here for us, here in Africa, to what you see there, what you're seeing is an underdevelopment of a society, not a natural normal growth and development in the technological advancement of society. You're seeing the result of a systemic effort by a group of people, W's, to keep a group of people and its community and society in a state of underdevelopment, which means over time, you become further and further and further and further behind in comparison to the other more developed societies. And that is a power move that reinforces in the minds of the people that the W's obviously are in the position because they're much smarter. They're much te more technologically advanced. They know how to do. No! You know how to do it. You 
the African people had the civilization first. They had the cities and the buildings and the roads and all that first. They had the plumbing and all that. They had it first. They taught the other people. Then the other people took the technology. And this is just a simple way of explaining it to you. They took the technology, used the technology for development of weaponry so that they can conquer. Do you understand? African people generally, as a people, as a society, peaceful people, minding their own business. And I'm gonna get into that, I'm gonna go into more detail, but minding their own business, and then they were not working to develop weapons of mass destruction. That's not what their goal was. That's not the goal of most people. That's not even the goal of most nations. They're a small group of people. You know, the W is really only about 10% of the world population. That group, that's their agenda. So they teach you through their education that this is the natural thing of man. Man is wild by nature and evil and has to be dominated and controlled. And we, being the morally righteous people, are educating and civilizing the world. Oh, nonsense. Oh, nonsense. They are the very people doing the things that they're telling you shouldn't be done. So, we're going to get into more of that. Just had to come by and let you guys know. Just let you guys know that there are other parts of Africa, Tanzania. Beautiful people working, living every day. And over time, all of this is going to change and develop too. But it's only going to happen. It's going to become more modernized when we... And I mean we, you, me, and others. Don't leave it to the leaders to promote positive, positive ideas and propaganda about our people, our neighborhoods, and our communities. It's up to us. So do your part. Don't be negative. I'm not saying don't be critical. Don't, don't perform critical analysis do that but remember the point of which when you talk about our societies and our behavior and our people make sure you include in your analysis and your assessment the fact that there is a group of people in this world working to help create instability under development in our communities and our societies with our boys and girls. And because I love the children, I'm, I always love our black children, my beautiful black African babies, little, little children all over the world. We as adults have a responsibility to do that part so that our children, if they don't get it from any place else, they get it from us. That we are a wonderful, strong, industrious people. Builders. Innovators. Scientists. Doctors. Lawyers creators of society and civilization in all that is good. We helped to initiate that. And we're gonna talk about that one day so you understand language. Everybody using language right now. That's a result of us. It's a result of us. And I know people, oh no, you think that it's all bad. Yes, listen, I want you to understand something. When you invent something, something that has never been invented before, you're the first one to invent it, then everything else is a copy of it. It's a copy of it. Now, you, you hear these crackers talk about, and the W's, copyright, meaning in their view of economic activity, everything that's, if you get the copyright, you're the owner, and then they gotta pay you for using it over a certain time, and then copyright lasts a certain Well. How do you think they even get the word copyright? How do you even think they get the idea? How do you think they get any of that? There was one person, one person, one group of people who invented language. The, 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 that would be the first people here. They didn't just come up and not communicate with each other. No, the first people who eventually developed the ability to communicate with one another. They could have been, whether it's grunting and growing, three grunts means Yes, and two grunts means no, or whatever. 
then other people seeing how those people interacted and developed and all that, they copied it, used it. But that means that the first person who created it or the first group of people, they're the ones who should be heralded as great geniuses and great this. But they don't do that with us. When they talk about history, they only want to talk about the beginning of their enlightenment, enlightenment period, the, the Greeks, the Greeks, and, uh, and, and Athens, and, and, oh, and the development of democracy. All that stuff is already done by Africans. Those people learn from Africa. Which I'm one of them, and you too, if you look like me and, and, and others that look like us. So, okay, everybody, that's enough. I've been, I just want you to know I'm so excited. It's beautiful. It's good to be back talking to you. I love you all. We're going to go ahead and end it here. Uhuru. Uhuru. Uhuru.